possible Long Island Railroad strike, a threat that's looking more and more like a reality. There were absolutely no new talks or negotiations today. And if the impasse lingers, all LIRR trains will expect to be or will stop running just after midnight Sunday, five days from now. That will leave 300,000 daily commuters to find other ways to work. We have live team coverage tonight. Greg Sergal is on Long Island, but we begin with News Force Andrew Siff at MTA headquarters in Midtown. Andrew. Sheba and David, you'd think it is Tuesday now, and with the strike deadline essentially Saturday night, you would think that the two sides would be at the bargaining table talking nonstop marathon sessions. That's not the case. They didn't talk today. There are no talks scheduled. They did talk to us, and you'll hear from them in a moment. But first, the MTA about to launch an ad campaign indicating their offer is more than generous. When is enough enough? That's what the MTA asks in a new ad blitz hitting newspapers and radio stations tomorrow. We're offering them a 17% wage increase, and that's for people who are already the highest paid commuter railroad employees in the nation with an average of $87,000 a year. The implication by the MTA is that you guys are being greedy. What about the fact that the implication by the MTA about paying into pensions and how the, the employees today, they want to pay more into pensions, the new employees, and we today pay into our pensions. How come that hasn't changed for the MTA managers? And the union's chief negotiator, Anthony Simon, said since the MTA hasn't called him back to the table since the talks broke off Monday, the chance of a strike went from likely to almost guaranteed. That went up to 100 percent. There's no, there's no, nobody calling to stop it. So far, this has not been a labor negotiation. This has been a hostage negotiation. Labor attorney Jonathan Bell told me since federal law allows the unions to strike, they have leverage to make the case the MTA should negotiate. There's no excuse. Even if they sit in a room and stare at each other, someone might come up with an idea that will solve it. Riders sure are hoping for a solution. My boyfriend takes the train every single day to and from work. We share a car, so the train stop running. He doesn't really have a way to get to work. While Governor Cuomo took a wait and see approach to getting directly involved while adding this perspective. Uh, Hurricane Sandy was a disaster. We've gone through other disasters. This is not a disaster. Uh, a real pain, maybe, but not a disaster. Very, good. Very measured approach from the governor so far. He was asked what it would take to get him to the table, and he said, let's see how it goes. The implication being maybe there's still room for these two sides to negotiate, but once again, there are no talks scheduled. Live in Midtown, Andrew Siff, News 40 York. Well, Andrew, another top state official has concerns about the economic impact. Today, New York State Controller Thomas DiNapoli said the cost of a strike to the economy of Long Island and New York City would be as much as $50 million per day, and he described that as a devastating blow. News 4's Greg Sergal, live in Mineola with more.